chance to do this right. Let's get it done. With that being said, yeah, I listened to the conversation with Swifty Blue and WAC 100. I was going to make a video on it, but if it's in the, in the same category as Cloud Chasing, I really want to do that guy. You know, he's big, but I do say this. Him calling himself the king of the south, I don't think the big homies are going to like that. I don't think the big homies are going to like that. So, let's get into this video. One of my subscribers hit me up on Instagram, asked me a serious question, and I actually like this question. I really do. So, with that being said, let's hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment, let me know what you guys think in the comment section, check the links in the description for my Apple, Spotify music, my links, go stream my music, it's all I ever ask from you guys, man. Thank you guys for your guys' support, and thank you for watching the video. Now, everybody knows about the late and great Savage Studio, and what took place with him, and I also did a video interpreting his mistakes and what he shouldn't have done. You know, it's okay to talk about our prison genre and our prison stories and everything that we've been through in prison. And I think everybody's well deserving of that. You know, prison ain't going to pay us back for all the time that we did and we made our mistakes. Nobody owes us nothing. So we shouldn't be sympathetic and asking for sympathy from nobody. We did it to ourselves. But since YouTube has, a, has its own genre of this, you know, we, it's okay for us to tell our stories within reason. Succeed in gaining monetary gain for ourselves and the process for it. So it's like, you know, we went through all that and we're rewarding ourselves. What he did was he did a, a fatal mistake by, you know, blatantly and openly disrespecting Lyme publicly and on live and to a lot of his subscribers over the internet. My subscriber asked me this. He said, Hey, if those, uh, those dude, the dude, the people that actually took his life ever ended up on SY, do you think the two fivers will retaliate? Now, let's talk about the Cinqueros. If you guys haven't watched none of my old, old videos about the Cinqueros and what took place, we're talking about a group that got created in like the early 90s, mid 90s. A lot of their founding members were actually Mexican Mafia dropouts. They actually coined the term Two Fivers because they were the, these Mexican Mafia dropouts were being called by other Mexican Mafia members as pesetas. So, they turned it around and said, Simon, two five, homie, two fivers, cinqueros. But here's the thing that nobody really knows about when it comes to the cinqueros. Is that after the very first riot between them and the Zapatistas, and I'm telling you, the Zapatistas were butchering these boys. But, there's two prisons... Salinas Valley, before the Zapatistas actually established their presence on that yard after the war was over, and in Old Corcoran B Yard, the two fivers were butchering the Zapatistas bad. Like, I'm talking about this gang war, people were getting airlifted every removal that took place. Every riot that kicked off, these guys were not fist fighting with one another. Their hatred is real. These dudes were actually going out there, and it looked like the American Civil War. They were just standing in front of each other and just, just poking each other. Everybody was everybody was going to medical looking like Swiss cheese. Medical staff was right there just doing a body charts and these guys connecting dots, playing connect the dots. That's how bad these guys were going at it with one another. Well, after this war took place, the two fivers got so big. When I mean by so big, I mean. You're talking about sometimes there are 50 to 100 members on each yard. In Tehachapi, there was 120. That's what we counted, 120 of these individuals. And that was just on A yard. B yard had the same amount. These individuals, they're all from Southern California. You'll see a couple of Norteños from like Stockton, Modesto, Sacramento. They actually join. You'll see some Asians. They recruit anybody. But they force a lot of recruitment as well. So if you're from Southern California and you're an ex Sureño, they're going to try to make you join their faction. They gotten so big that they couldn't control one another. They couldn't keep it really organized. So they divided themselves into subsections, subgroups. You had Fuerza, you have uh, FM, Fuerza Mexica, should I say? Ramfla, the Grim Reapers. You had El Malditos. You have a, a, a different sections. And each, each, every time you become a Cinquero... Then you become part of one of the factions that you choose to be. Like I said, Orange County might be mostly uh, Ramflas. So if you're from Orange County, you're going to join uh, Ramflas. FMs, a lot of people from like Bakersfield or LA join that one. And, you know, there's Grim Reaper. There's, there's so many subsections to these guys. 
is because they're so big. And I can tell you this, they're on every SNY yard that you can think of. That's how deep they are. And the thing about these guys is you can go to war with them. They might break it down. But they never forget. These guys' communication is on a whole different level. I've seen a dude get booked three years later by these guys. When he just when he thought he got away. When he thought that nobody would remember him. When he thought growing his brocha out like an Asian movie and he was hanging above both lips. It looked like a broomstick. Get butchered. They'll find you. That's one thing I've always respected about these guys. And I went to war with these guys plenty of times. Plenty of times. These individuals don't play. They do not forget. And their communication is they, strong. You can't really run away from these guys. They'll, they'll, they'll find a way to catch up to you. And there's ways on the S and Y to manipulate the prison system to reach you if they need to reach you. And they're good at that. But after the, uh, the Zapatista and the 2-5 war took place. Everything went to normal. Everything was at peace. Except a lot of the uh, old school founders of the Cinqueros, a lot of the Mexican mafia members that started it, weren't, weren't really too happy that the war was over. See, the two fivers don't like that Mexicans started their own gangs. They didn't, they didn't trip on the riders. They were mostly tripping on the independent riders. They felt like ex-Sureños shouldn't be part of no other uh, S&Y gang other than Cinqueros. So they would go to war and they usually over, try to over, overpower the independent riders and pick on them. And they'll find reasons to go to war with that group like nothing. Trust me. They wouldn't go to war with riders, though, I tell you that much. They knew better. But when they seen the Zapatistas grow, when they went to war with them in the beginning, there wasn't that many members because it only happened in Sad FD yard. So the members were very small. So once the war got them to the uh, pretty much dis dis distributed amongst the uh, SMY population out through Northern California, and a couple went to Southern California, they looked at it as an opportunity to stop it from growing, to nip it in the bud. So the ones in Southern California, the one the prisons in Southern California, like Donovan, Santanella, Lancaster, a Sabatista couldn't be there. On they were on site and they were on site with weapons. Up north, it was a little bit different. It was a lot more complicated because the Zapatistas at the time had help with the IRs and the riders because we all share the same ideologies as that. Man, forget these fools. Fool, these fools don't run no yards. They're deep, bro, but don't matter, bro. We, we go to war anytime, any, any place. So they had a little bit more help, and it was a little bit easier for them to establish their presence up north. But a lot of the Cinqueros were like, you know, it is what it is. The vast majority of them agreed, like, you know what, we just want peace. I mean, the, the, the administration ain't going to just get rid of these guys. We're going to start losing brothers. And the Zapatistas is all ha no hands-on policy. It's all weapon policy. And mind you, their first year, they, they body like maybe five or six people. Their first year becoming an organization, becoming a movement. And the two fivers lost a lot of homies. They were butchering a lot of their homies in the process. So I think they just kind of reflected on what was taking place, and um, they wanted they just wanted to settle the settle the beef. But these old school founding members were like, "Nah, bro, let's nip it in the bud. Let's get rid of them now that we got the chance." So they got into this big feud, and then these dudes, like I said, these Mexican mafia members, no matter if it's a dropout, like just like an NF, no matter if he's still a dropout, they have this complex that you have to respect them for who they are, for who they were. And the Cinqueros didn't like that. And to this day, there's not one founding father that exists in their organization. These guys came together in so many different prisons, communicated through so many different prisons, and sanctioned one big removal. And they removed all their founding fathers out of their own organization. Talk about betrayal. Talk about some treachery stuff. These guys that actually made their identity, created who they are, Gave them the concept of what it's like to be a Cinquero 2 5 against the Mexican Mafia, against Sureños. They all looked at their big homies like Vamanos. Adios, amigo. <laughs> and just butchered their own founding fathers. So these dudes are hard to trust, bro. These dudes are hard to get along with and hard to program with. If they were quick to turn on their own. But they have a big history of turning on their own. So, 
Savage Studio labeled himself a two-fiver. So he gets hurt and he gets on the live by Sureños on behalf of the Mexican Mafia, so on and so forth. Now in the event, we're just speaking hypothetically. You know, if, if and ands were pots and pans, that kind of thing. If he was to end up on the SNY, that's not going to be hard to figure out. These guys have a way of finding things out. Not knowing this person and who he is, he's probably going to go over there bragging about it to one of his cellies. Might not want to mention it to a Cinquero if he ever runs into one, but they're going to press him just based on he's from Southern California. But if it ever comes to light that this individual is the one that got rid of Savage Studio, he's, it's going to be so hard for him to exist on an SNY yard. Because the way these guys operate, the reason why they're so deep is because, I'll give you an example. In Tehachapi, they strip one of the jersey. That's the 2-5 mark. Or the, the hand with the two dots in the middle. This man gets stripped of his jersey. He, he gets transferred to another facility. He can go right up to the sink and like, hey, fool, they stripped my jersey over here, but I still want to be a two-fiver. So whatever car he was a part of, a Ramfla, Grim Reaper, uh, Fuerza Machica, or there's, there's another one. I just can't remember it. I'll remember it later. He can get easily embraced, and they still keep their numbers up. He'll just probably go on the next thing smoking. And these guys, these guys that go on the next thing smoking for them, they're coming at you with blades. They're ripping your face open. They're going to come at you with weapons. That's how they continue to stay deep because they give their members another chance to put in work and earn their jersey back. And I don't know why these dudes have been known to be the most treacherous, scandalous individuals on the SNY. But people want to be a part of their organization because they're big. And trust me, you hurt one, all of them are going to go up. Me, me and this dude start fighting on the yard one-on-one, -on -one, they're not going to hesitate to rush you 50 deep. Even if his homie's in a wrong and we prove it, they're going to let it be like, hey, it's whatever, homie, 2-5, homie, 2-5. Just like that. So this guy won't stand a chance, a snowball's chance in hell. They're going to book him every chance he gets just based on he took out one of their own, based on he did it on behalf of the black hand, based on he's an ex-southerner, bragging about it. So I can tell you this, his death will be avenged if this dude ever landed on the SNY. I don't wish that upon him. Hopefully he stays on the general population because he's doing life. You might as well stay on that side because you come to this side of politics are way different. They're more corrupt. They're not as structured. They're not as organized. And you can get hurt a lot more easier on the SNY side than you could on a general population side. Because these guys, don't, they have a long memory. They don't know how to forget what you've done. Sometimes a Zapatista might land on a yard where none of his brothers are there. And they're going to look at it like, well, his brothers ain't here to protect him. We ain't got no reason to negotiate with this man. And plus, isn't that the one that stabbed the homie Nine Lives right here? Or that's the homie that ripped the homie JoJo's face open and ripped his eyeballs out? Let's get him. And what trips me out about the two fires, a lot of them dudes always have dates. They're always like three, five, seven years away from their dates. But they have a hip policy on all... You know, S offenders, should I say. They have a hit policy. They don't jump them. They're going to pick a couple of cinqueros that got 10 years plus, And they're going to go out there and they're, they're going to they they start tearing slabs off this guy. Veneno, the ex-Mexican mafia dude from down south, he's one of them that, that he don't play around. Man, that boy butchers stuff when he has to. I have pictures in my, in my paperwork right here. They're just hard to really see. When the two fivers went at it with the NC, Scrappy's group, one of Scrappy's his homies is right there, laying on a gurney. And you can see his face from here all the way past his nose. Just, just the, the, the gash goes all the way across. And it was done by a Cinquero named, um, I want to say his name was Grizzly. Grizzly either from Boyle Heights. I didn't know he was dark skinned and he was he really looked like a grizzly bear. Like He was huge, bro. And like... That boy had cellulite by his belly button. Now, you couldn't even tell the belly button was a belly button. It actually looked like just cellulite. That's how, it was just gross. I don't know why I felt like that telling you about his belly button, but hey, I got a fetish for belly button. That's Tony. So, if only I could show you that picture, bro. I'd have to give it to you in your hand, and you'd have to look at it closely, and you'll see the gash wound when they went at it with the NCs. Yeah, a lot of two fibers got hurt in that process, too. Got hurt in that ride, too, but... Man, I got the pictures of all the victims up there. They're just hard to see. I'm thinking about making copies of it. And then, you know what I mean? Getting a little extra money, helping you guys out. 
I don't know. What do you guys think, bro? I'm willing to sell the copies. I got a printer. You know what I mean? So no, yes. I honestly feel like they will revenge this man's death. So I can only hope that the individual that actually took Savage Studios' life doesn't end up on the SNY because these dudes are very corrupt. Very corrupt. And these dudes love communicating with one another. These dudes are always going to the hall and getting shipped out to other facilities. They memorize everything. So he, this dude could be on one yard and you got a riot that kicks off with the two fibers. They all get shipped out to different directions. Four of them land on this yard. They're going to go asking around. They're going to talk to their brothers and ask who's there. If they, if they find out that man's there, they're going to convince all these two fibers. Hey, bro, that fool, uh, he unallowed another brother on the streets. And he's going to get blasted. Now, I was one thing, like, if we're on the yard and the non-affiliate actually goes head up with a two-fiver and they jump him, they might see him as a threat and be like, you know what, we're just going to jump this fool off the yard every chance he gets. See, they pick and choose when they're going to pick up a banger and when they're going to jump you off the yard. If you're not that much of a threat, but they feel like doing something, they feel like causing ruckus, they feel like living a, a laying down a demonstration, yeah, they're going to jump this dude. But when it's serious... Like, is if you hurt one of their brothers on the yard with a weapon, if you spill one of their brother's blood, they're going to go up, bro, and they don't stop because they have the numbers to do it. They stop when they feel like they want to stop, or they'll stop most of the time when they feel like, you know, the war's enough already. Them dudes push it. They really push it. They get on my nerves sometimes, bro, because trust me, I went to war with them on two different occasions, and I got the pictures of the ones that I booked. These dudes won't stop because they feel like they're, they can overwhelm us with numbers. But eventually, you know, we got them to, like, kill the noise. But also, there was a couple of homies that were some, some weenies that actually helped that negotiate that kill the noise thing. And we were like, oh, whatever, bro. We could have went to war. But then at the end, we're like, cool. Damn, man. That thing was getting deadly. It was getting dangerous, bro. Like, my, like my butthole was raw from going in and out, 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 pulling in with a rat tail. Ugh. I'll tell you about the rat tail there on my, in my hoop tutorial that I'll be planning on doing soon. So, with that being said... That's my answer to my subscriber. Hope you guys like my answer. Glad I was able to break down a, the two five faction as well. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When you got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.